Uh, let's get going. We're going to do some clicking here in a minute. Make sure your clicker is handy. We'll be doing some toward the end of lecture as well. We're going to be talking about waves and some of the waves that I'm going to talk about you can think of as sound waves or sound waves are a good example uh, but mainly what we're going to th the reason that we're studying waves is so we can understand electromagnetic waves. Uh, now before we get it to any of that Jennifer let's just uh, make a um, couple little announcements concerning homework. Uh, homework 17 no Homework 18, uh, which I didn't get set up until kind of late yesterday. Uh, so I decided to give you guys a break and make it due on Tuesday next week. Now we're going to have another homework, homework 19 over the weekend. And it's going to be a big one, a weekend home. The weekend homeworks are always bigger than the middle of the week homeworks. And uh, so you're going to have two homeworks going. And by the way, um, I'm. Are you eating ice cream back there? I just saw this big spoonful of white stuff. And it looked like vanilla ice cream, which. You know, what my big sister did when I was a little kid. I'm out in the backyard playing on the swings or something. And she came out with this big spoonful of white stuff. And she said, this is butter. And she just swallowed it. But it was, you know what it was? It was vanilla ice cream. But see, I was a little shrimpy kid. So, I, you know. So she knew she could trick me. You know, my big, you know, I've never paid her back for that. So I got to gotta figure out some way to do that. Uh, anyways, concerning this image here of uh, Logan, I'm going to give you some more equilibrium, uh, thermal equilibrium calculation practice on the big homework, uh, which will be 19. And, I, you know, just so you have some extra practice and... Uh, you know, because I was talking to some students at office hours yesterday and, you know, you know, okay, yeah, you could use some more practice. So I'll make homework 19, I'll put at least one thermal equilibrium, but I'll have to design a new one because I can't give you the coffee and cream one again because you've already had that. So it's going to be, uh, you know what it's going to be? It's going to be yogurt and something, I don't know. Or butter and, you know, butter and coffee. That's what some people drink. But anyways, I'll, I'll figure out some new one and, uh, and give you some extra practice so that you can get ultra sharp with that. And let me also remind you that the lovely uh, formula that was in discussions, uh, you might want to know how to do it the Dr. B way, if you want to crush the exam. Just saying. In other words, that formula ain't going to help you much on the, on the next exam. But doing it, you know, kind of slow and easy through the table method might, might be uh, quite helpful. Um, also, I, I keep saying that I'm going to activate the chapter six uh, mini review and now we're going to I'm going to activate the chapter 7 mini review I think this weekend I'll try to do it today actually uh, and the reason for that it's diff it, I keep th forgetting about it is I actually have to send away by email to the Great River Company and tell them okay activate it uh, on this date uh, until and close it on this other date and stuff like that and in web courses I do all that myself and you know, if I want to change something, I just do it. But this one takes a little more time and a little more work. So, uh, any questions about homework and stuff?
That's a pretty big spoon, too. It looks like a serving spoon. No, I'm just, you know, if I could see it from back here, it looked big from all this distance, you know, about 0 0.06 light years between me and you. No. no. No, see, I, I, have, a, I have a protein bar. I, it's, it doesn't compete with yogurt, but still pretty good. Uh, anyway, so if there's no other questions, uh, we'll, we'll get back to discussing wave concepts. Now, one of the things that we talked about were basic, basic wave concepts like phase. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about is you can think of, you know, each part of a wave, you know, the peak, the trough, the you know the you know the crossing point where it crosses equilibrium, because the you know the sea level part you know the zero on this graph is equilibrium. I mean every every oscillating system oscillates above and then below equilibrium with some kind of a restoring force, some kind of um, second power in the coordinate for the potential energy. Uh, so there's always an equi So you can think of the equilibrium, you can think of every single point as having some number between 0 and 2 pi. And why do we use 0 to 2 pi? Because um, it actually, t if, for a, a, full a full lap around a circle, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times whatever the radius is. All right? So half a circle is pi times whatever the radius is. And 90 degrees worth of a circle is pi over 2 times whatever the radius happens to be. So you can, you know, you can, if you're thinking about, you know, this analogy between circles and waves, which is a good analogy to use, then 0 to 2 pi is righteous. And so this little list here we talked about last time, and I want to emphasize a few more um, uh, thing. So what we're going to do is elaborate on the idea of phase, and we're going to do some clicking questions, and uh, we're going to actually tackle this idea of two waves um, after, after we do some clicking. So let's do some clicking. Uh, question number one, multiple choice. Here it is, frequency DD. Angelica's here. We can now get clicking. Okay. Basic, basic, basic. What's the amplitude of this wave? Go ahead and vote. Come on, baby. What's wrong here? This thing's not letting me... It's burning my grits here. I can't grate it. I'll have to do it later, I guess. Okay. Um, all right, there we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, zero. Okay, good. Yeah, that one is uh, amplitude 50. Remember, the amplitude, so a few of you got this one wrong. Um, the amplitude is from the equilibrium level up to the peak, or from equilibrium level down to the trough. You know, And then if you're going equilibrium down the trough, that might be a negative number. You know, like if it's, if it's a Y coordinate, so then you just take the absolute value of, of whatever that is. You know, amplitude's always a positive. Now, phase. Let's talk about this. So we'll just do a little mini review here. The whole idea of phase. Now, the, the symbol that you can use for phase, if you're going to give it a number between 0 and 2 pi, or beyond 2 pi, if you're, if you're looking at more than one wave, uh, is, you know, the symbol is, is usually phi, although you see other symbols in use. You know, there's, no, there's nothing special about this one. 
So if you'd say, if you start your accounting at this first peak on the left and say, all right, phi is equal to zero, then the next peak over here is going to be phi equals 2 pi, right? That's, two pi, that's a phase of 2 pi. Now, if you, if you don't want to go any further, good. But if you want to go further, go out to the next peak, yeah. 4 pi, yeah, that's good. You could do that. You know, then you're talking about uh, three consecutive, two consecutive waves, uh, each worth about 2 pi of phase. Now, um, you can identify uh, other parts of the wave, like the trough. Okay, so this trough down here uh, is pi. Also, you can use the terminology of degrees. All right, so you might want to add this to your notes. I won't add it to the, to the diagram here, but if you, if you say that this is, um, let me get this over here. If you say that this is zero degrees here, then 2 pi, this would be 360 degrees. You know, one full wave, one full circle. You've gone through 360 degrees. And then this one, if you're talking degrees, 720, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the trough down here, that's a half of a cycle from my starting point up here, which I chose to be the, the crest, the peak of the wave. So this one is a phase of pi when you're using the, this is what we call the radian system, R-A-D-I-A-N. Uh, but if you're using degrees, this would be 180, all right, halfway around the circle. And hopefully that makes some sense to your, your mind. Now, I have another clicker. Austin, I have another clicker question. Okay. I saw you whispering something over there, so I thought, okay. Some top secret technology concerning 180 degrees. Anyways, so you, you've got this phase business. And as I said, you can identify any particular point on the wave. You know, so you could say, you know, if you're using radians, you can do... Um, instead of pi and 2 pi and stuff like that, you could say f phi equals 0 0.209 or something like that. If you're using degrees, you can say, all right, I'm, I'm about 37.5 degrees through the, through the wave. You know, you could say that as well. Now, the next question is about that. What is the phase of at this equilibrium point, the black arrow. Now here's the black arrow, okay? So now my wave is descending through equilibrium, descending through sea level, de descending through zero. You know, I haven't really told you what kind of wave this is, but you know, it could be a pressure wave. And then that's the, at the ambient air pressure, and, uh, but if it's a wave in the ocean, then that's sea level. All right, so go ahead and select it. Wow, you guys are geniuses. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my gracious. Well, I guess you guys just starting to get it. I, Trying my hardest. Trip you guys up, see if I can burn your brains, but it ain't working. Not yet, anyways. All right, 10, 15 seconds to vote. <coughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Um, yeah, this one, so here's your, here's your layout. And so that, that equilibrium point right here, uh, the wave is descending through sea level. 
uh, that's halfway between 0 and pi. So that means it's pi over 2. All right, so make a note of that. And you can label all the one, you know, all the rest of them, if you like. Um, you know, like the next, the next crossing point is 3 pi over 2, 1 and a half pi, which is halfway between 1 pi and 2 pi. All right. And final side note to you concerning phase is this, that you can start your phase accounting um, system wherever you feel like it. You know, like you could have started it over there at time t equals zero on the time axis all the way on the left. And then, you know, and then everything would change. But, you know, once you start, you know, we started at the, at the peak, so that's good. That's a, you know, that's not a bad starting point. But, you know, you could do it wherever you want. And if you do it at a different, if you start it at a different point, every, all your other points of the wave will change, you know. Uh, but the, uh, the difference between the phases will be the same. You know, pi over 2 from peak to equilibrium, pi over 2 from, from equilibrium to trough, pi from peak to trough, trough to peak, etc., etc. So now, um, last time we were talking about these wavelets and the fact that um, that waves do not behave like baseballs, like Newtonian particles. They don't behave like basketballs that we've used. You know the you know, the basketball kinetic energy calculation. You know, we've done a lot of that stuff. You know, jumping out, of, we, we, we've taken and looked at pictures of students jumping out of perfectly good airplanes. Uh, and, you know, but those are not waves. Okay, waves um, are harder to localize. They display diffraction and they generate wavelets, you know, when they go through a barrier or around an edge of something like that. And that's something called interference. Okay, so, and interference comes when you add two waves together or you have two waves interacting. Now, baseballs, billiard balls, molecules, at least in the kinetic theory of gas, they interact like billiard balls and, you know, they, when they interact, they, you know, you know, they bump into each other and they go off in some other direction. You know, if they come in straight and bump head to head, then they reverse course. If they come in at an angle, they, you know, they kind of shift up to a different angle, but, you know, they change direction and they just keep on going until they get to the next interaction. All right, but waves, it's a little bit different. Now, go ahead and make a sketch of this wave. Okay. And I've got it graphed out uh, on the x-axis from about 0 0.03, uh, excuse me, from 0 all the way out to about 0.18, amplitude 50. All right. And, uh, you know, and you can see, and I've got, let's see, I've got about 1, 2, We've got about two and a half waves sketched out. And you could put dot, dot, dot to the left and dot, dot, dot to the right for those waves. Uh, the middle peak, uh, phase 2 pi, uh, if, if we start the phase accounting at the top of the first peak, the second peak in the middle, ugh, that's about phi equals 2 pi. And that's at about 0 0.09, halfway through the diagram. But not exactly. All right. And the first peak, phi equals 0, is a little bit even further to the left of 0 0.03. And phi equals pi, the first trough, is a little bit to the left of 0 0.06. All right, so... All right, now the third peak actually looks right 
just about at 0 0.15. Now, I designed this, this graph and the next one that you're going to see uh, to be a little bit uh, different. Um, they're not exactly, you know, not, I, I didn't make them so that they would come down on whole numbers or easy fractions like 0.15, although this one's fairly close. All right, now I'm going to show you another one. Okay. Um, uh, this is screwed up. Hold on. Okay. Gosh, dog it. All right, I we'll just go with this. I thought I had it fixed. Huh. Um, go ahead and sketch in, and you know what? Look, it's it's good. Just sketch in the red wave, um, and it's slightly shifted to the right. The peak of the red wave is a little bit to the right. And you can see it's a little bit, it, matter of fact, you can see that the, the second trough of the red wave is pretty, whoa. No, wait a minute, the red wave. Didn't we already do the red wave first? Okay, so the blue, let's look at the blue wave. The blue wave doesn't hit anything. Okay, the blue wave, and Dr. B outsmarted myself today with this one. Uh, so the blue wave is, is uh, the second one, and its peak is about halfway between 0 and 0 0.03. And its first trough is halfway, looks pretty, this one looks like it's, and it's, it's inching slightly to the right. And notice that the blue one is slightly to the left of the red one, all right? And what we would say is they both have amplitude of 50. You know, so this could be 50 decibels, you know, or 50 feet if it's a wave out, a big wave out in the ocean. So it would be gigantic. And now, he, here's the shift. This is what we would call the phase shift. All right, this little distance here. See this up here? Now, I sketched it in at the top of the first peak of the blue and the red. So here it is. That's delta phi, Greek letter phi. And it's pretty small. It's about, I don't know, about 0.1 something. 0.01 something. All right, now I've got all that, you know, programmed into a spreadsheet. These images are, are uh, output from my spreadsheet. And I got two different waves. And I got, and I got my second wave, same amplitude, but, you know, uh, out of phase a little bit. All right, so these two, these two waves, now this is looking at them on the same screen, but in reality, if these were sound waves coming into your ear, they would, you wouldn't, you wouldn't hear them as two, you'd just hear one wave, right? They'd combine together. And so when you add them together, this is what they look like, okay? Now this one, notice, this one has an amplitude almost 100. It's way bigger than 50. So this is up there like 80 something, all right? But it has the same number of peaks and troughs. And in fact, if you were to measure it, you know what I think I'll do? You know what I'll do? I'll try to put all three of these images together into a homework problem or maybe a set of two or three homework problems. You know, for you just to see, you know, um, how the, 
the, all of them fit together. Because, and, and here's the kicker. You probably can't go by your notes, but I'll tell you what this, the situation is. Here's my... Now it's working. All right, so here's my, here's my combo. Now the peak of the purple, which is a com combination of red and blue, um, you know, they're, they're shifted. There's the phase shift. The peak is going to be right between those two. All right? The peak in the purple wave is going to be right between those two babies. All right? And that's where the peak in this purple one is. All right, now you can't really see it probably from your diagram, but I'll try to set this up. You know what I'll do? I'll do a little mini image of just the peak. The peak of the blue and the red, and then the peak of the... I'll put them all in the same image. That'll be good. All right, so you add them together by ear. You get one. And, you know, when you're... You, you know, you think about it. This classroom, it's got a bunch of speakers, right? Okay, some on the left, some in the right. And you've been in places where they have big speakers. You know, if you have a... St you, in your car, you have stereo speakers, right? You have stereo at home, all right? Speaker A is over here, speaker B. But they're playing the same music. Um, if they play the same note, you know, you'll, you'll hear two different sources, but they combine together to make one note. So um, these have the same wavelength and frequency, but they have more amplitude, and the, pe the peaks are actually shifted. All right, relative to the red peak and shifted relative to the blue peak. All right, and this is what we call inter a very simple example of something called interference. Two waves, they don't ricochet off each other like baseballs do or molecules. You know, basketball ricochets off the backboard. All right. If it hits the side of the backboard, it'll kind of blaze off to, to an angle maybe, but it, it won't diffract. And when you put two waves together like this, they'll combine to give one big amplitude wave. And this is how you, by the way, this is how you get those rogue waves out in the ocean. You know, they come out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, they slam it to a ship, and the, you know, the ship can be lost, they say, some of those big row waves. All right, now, uh, so that's a first look at interference. Now I want to go through the calculation of wavelength and frequency and speed for, for basic waves. And we talked about this one last time, too. The wavelength is the spatial distance between two successive waves. And really what it should be between the two successive peaks or two successive troughs. Okay. Two points of equal phase, two successive waves. Um, and the, the period is the amount of time one wave takes to get past you. We mentioned this last time as well. And the frequency, see this, electric, this wave equation, V equals lambda F, it's a relationship uh, between the wavelength and the frequency. The frequency is just whatever the period is, one over that. All right, so the unit of frequency, my wonderful students, is per second or seconds to the minus one. Go ahead and make a note of that in your notes. I don't, I don't think I have it on the outline, but the unit of frequency is per second. Or you could write it as seconds to the minus one. And that's a little compact way. Another way of saying seconds to the minus one or per, cycles per second is to use um, a name. Hertz, H-E-R-T-Z. Now, it's not named after the rental car company. It's, it's named after Professor Hertz in Germany, who was the first person to create 
electromagnetic waves. You know, they, they knew the theory of electromagnetic waves. He figured out a way to create them and then measure them. In other words, he got a signal, a radio frequency signal in his lab. And then we started, you know, f soon after that, we started making radio that could go across the ocean or from here to Mars, for that matter. You know, so we know how to do radio waves now. But Hertz is the, uh, is the first guy to actually measure that and show that electromagnetic waves exist. And so they, they named the frequency a unit after him. Another thing that we talked about is the electromagnetic spectrum um, and the electromagnetic spectrum uh, goes from, you know, very, very small uh, wavelengths in gamma rays and all the way up to very, very large wavelengths in radio waves. And the visible part, the Roy G. Biv part, is kind of between those two extremes. So in terms of uh, frequency, smallest frequency is radio. Small frequency, but big wavelength. Also small frequency, but not as small, is infrared. And by the way, uh, microwave frequency is also uh, down in the, How come this says A, two letters A? I think somebody sab sabotaged my, my PowerPoint here. Who could it be? Somebody. So infrared, then visible, Roy G. Biv. Then ultraviolet. Now, ultraviolet, you're starting to get smaller wavelengths. X-rays, really small. That's why X-rays penetrate. You know, they can't penetrate your bones, but they'll go through your skin like they're not even there. You know, all, you know, and all your tendons and stuff for the most part. They'll catch a little bit. They'll, st they'll stop a little bit. And your skin will catch a little bit of x-rays, but mostly it's transparent to x-rays, which is why we use x-rays to take pictures of your bones. You know, you break your arm and stuff, we can see if it's a bad one or a simple fracture, stuff like that. And then gamma rays above that. Uh, side note, if, if we haven't already made a note of this, um, the violet end, V-I-O-L-E-T, the violet end of the visible spectrum is about 400 nanometers. Nanometers is abbreviated NM, lowercase n, lowercase m. The red end of the visible band is about 700, a little, little bit longer. Still pretty small, 700 nanometers, but a little bit bigger than the violet. And then green's kind of in the middle there. So. so if you're at it about, you know, six something, seven something hundred nanometers you're talking either red or maybe if you're past 700 you know like 743 nanometers that's probably infrared for most people although they say that certain animals can see infrared a little bit of infrared here's the speed of light so when we use the equation to calculate lambda that's our second main topic today and this is a calculation that you'll have on homework. Uh, actually, you already did. You had one little multiple choice. Cinchy, uh, I think it was a frequency calculation uh, on the homework. And we're going to do a little fancier one today. But you have to use the speed of light three times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right. And um, light being an example of an electromagnetic field that oscillates. Everything in this picture that you see, this lovely photograph, this is up in uh, Shenandoah National Park up in Virginia about a year ago. Uh, and uh, everything you see in that picture is from light. That's how, photo that's how your eyes work. That's how photographs work. And something else I mentioned last time, uh, the energy for... Uh, the electromagnetic field is proportional to the amplitude, the square of the amplitude of the electromagnetic field. So it, electromagnetic field, that's the sign, you know, square of an amplitude.
that means that amplitude is going to oscillate. So the electric field oscillates, the magnetic field oscillates. And we'll be talking about electromagnetic field next week. So here's the electromagnetic wave equation. Wavelength times frequency is the speed of light. Speed of light is a constant. All right, go ahead and write that down. Your homework is going to be all about that. Now the wavelength is a spatial measurement. And it's measured in... Um, meters, centimeters, kilometers, you know, any kind of, you know, I've never seen a wavelength measured in inches or feet or anything like that, although I just haven't. So I think everybody now is, is working in metric for wavelengths and stuff. The period is temporal in seconds and the frequency is one over the period. So, so what we're going to do, uh, my wonderful students, uh, for the next few minutes, would you like to dismiss a little early today? Yes. <laughs> Good gravy. Yeah, everybody go and, go and get some yogurt over at Smoothie King or something like that. Uh, but let, let's do a calculation. What we're going to do is calculate the frequency using C equals lambda F for something that's red. Now, red, you're talking high 600s up to about 700 or so. So let's use 656. 656 nanometers. Now, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter, billionth with a B, B for Bravo. It's also 10 to the minus 9 meters. It's a thousandth of a millionth. Millionth part of a millimeter. So, so 656 nanometer wavelength. And what we're going to do is we're going to use C equals lambda F, but we're going we're to flip it around a little bit. We want to get the frequency, so we're going to divide both sides by lambda. All right, and then we're going to put 3 times 10 to the 8 in the numerator, Brittany. And then we're going to put 656 nanometers down in the denominator. And then we're going to, you know, calculate it out and stuff. So get your calculators out. If you have an iPhone, turn it sideways and you'll get scientific notation. Okay, and, and this... In these calculations, you're going to definitely want to use scientific notation, right? So you'll have. So we're going to do a practice. I'm going to show you how to do it all on paper, and I'll give you some examples of how to do it on your calculator. And uh, now, if if you want to figure out the wavelength given the frequency, this is the one that you would use. So keep this one in reserve, C over F, C over the frequency, will get you the wavelength. Now, we're going to use the top one because we want to figure out frequency. But you know your homework, you might want to figure out a wavelength, and this is the one that you would use. So they're both based on, you know, the, the wave equation, C equals lambda F. C equals lambda F is the preferred form of that simply because it's all one line. It doesn't require it doesn't require any fractions or anything fancy. No powers, you know, no second power or anything like that. It's just a bunch of letters, one of them being a Greek letter. All right, here we go. Calculate uh, the frequency at wavelength 656 nanometers. All right, so here we go. Speed of light on top, that's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. All right, we got that squared away. And then down on the bottom, 656 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. All right? Now, I've written it all down. If you're, if you're on exam 3 and you forgot your calculator, you've got to do it out by hand on paper, pencil paper. That's how you do it. All right? Now, 10 to the minus 9 in the denominator is the same as 10 to the regular 9 in the numerator. Let me repeat that so you don't forget. 
this 10 to the minus 9 here in the denominator is the same as 10 to the regular 9 upstairs in the numerator. Now, oh, one more thing. Meters cancel. And look at what you got left. You have per second that doesn't cancel. And that's good. That's what we want because we're trying to figure out a frequency. All right? and that's going to be hertz. All right? We're going to convert this into hertz. All right? But for right now, here's what we've got. So this is pencil and paper. If you know how to do this on your calculator, you're home free. It's, it's a piece of, it's what we call in the business a walk in the park. But if you're pencil and paper, you can do it this way. You take the 3 and the 656 and you make a 10 to the 17. And then you just kind of, and, and then you go to your calculator. And here's how you could do it. And notice that my unit is still per second, everything per second. So if you're doing it on a calculator, just, you know, if you have a, a Mac, if you have an iPhone, they have an EE button. I don't know what they got on an Android phone, but if you, and if you have a regular calculator, uh, don't use 10 to the X button. There's a different button for scientific notation where you type in the three and then the power, okay? And some, you know, Casios are different from Texas Instruments and Hewlett Packard and stuff like that. So you just got to look at your, but you better get used to it. You know, better do some practice with that. Okay, so enter that in, 3 EE and then 17, and then divide by 656. Six. And what you're going to get, anybody get a, uh, a power of 10? Something times 10 to the something power? What do you, what do you got? Uh, 4. 5, 7, no, 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 just the power of 10. Uh, anybody else with 10 to the 14? Okay, good. And the 3 divided by 656 six gives you a 4.57. So this is what you got. If you do it on the calculator, that's what you got. If you do it by hand, you're going to have some point oh 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 uh, four five sevens, but you know it's not too bodacious. And uh, now we're going to convert that's still in per second. And what we're going to do, and and I want you to jot this down carefully because I'm going to ask you to answer the next clicker question or uh, two clicker questions from now in, in something called terahertz, okay? So this answer is the same as 457 terahertz. So if I ask you to give me the answer in terahertz, you'll type in 457 and then hit the send key. Powers of 10 are a pain in the boop on the eye clicker. All right, so we're not going to do that. All right, so we're just going to, so I'm going to tell you, give me the answer in terahertz or give me the answer in kilohertz or megahertz. Now, how is this equal to terahertz? Terahertz, tera, capital T, that stands for 10 to the 12 of anything, All right? So that 10 to the 14 here is the same as 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 12. Okay, so you, you convert that 10 to the 12 into a capital T, and then this 10 to the second, you multiply by 4.57, and you get 457, all right? So these two numbers, 4.57, and 10 of the 2 converge, and then you're left out here with 10 of the 12. Okay, so that's the, that's the capital T. Now, I didn't, I didn't put in the per seconds or the hertzes here, but just the numeric part. Okay, so when you're doing the, the next uh, in, in two questions, you're going to do, do a calculation before we dismiss early. Uh, you're going to need to know how to do this terahertz 
conversion. Because visible light is going to give you answers in the terahertz region. Oh, uh, let me give you a list. Okay, let's make a list of these uh, abbreviations. Kilohertz, K-H-Z, and Hertz is capital H-Z. So K, capital H-Z, that's a thousand cycles per second, 10 to the third power. Next one. Megahertz, capital M, capital H, Z. That's 10 to the 6 cycles per second. 10 to the 6 hertz. The next one, 10 to the 9, is gigahertz. And gigahertz is where your cell phones are operating. Okay, megahertz... Uh, your is where your FM radio is. So FM radio is up in the range of like 80 to 100 uh, megahertz. And AM radio is in the range of a few hundred to about a thousand kilohertz. Okay, kilocycles per second. So when you listen to WDBO uh, ESPN radio, 580 a.m. That's 50. That's 580 kilohertz. All right. And when you listen, I don't know what it is on FM. But let's see. There's if you listen to like 95.9 uh, on the FM dial, that's 95.9 megahertz. And then your cell phone is like a couple, I don't know what it is here in the United States, but it's gigahertz. I think it's like two point something gigahertz that our cell phones. But then if you go over to Europe, they have a slightly different frequency range over there. Anybody ever been, ever been over to Europe with a, with a, a phone? And do you, have to, do you have to be wise about the frequencies and stuff? Seriously? Is that the same experience you had? Yeah, nice Wi-Fi. Of course, you could call them Wi-Fi. Yeah, so over in Europe, it's completely different. So, and uh, anybody been down to the Caribbean lately? It, uh, are they are they using American? Can you use an American phone down there? I think you can. Can you? Depending on where you go, I guess. Puerto Rico, I'm sure. Saint Thomas and the Virgin Islands, I'm sure. These American. But like someplace like Antigua or, you know, Barbados or something, I don't know what they use. Oh, so up in the BVIs? Yeah. That's English. That's British. So. Yeah. All right. I click a question. Number three for today. So this is a visual IQ test. See how you do. Good. I can see everybody going. Good. You know the way the best way to fall asleep if you're counting sheep? You know, some people they count, you know, one sheep two sheep, three sheep. But the best way is count up the feet and divide by four. And that'll, that it's true, and it will put you to sleep way faster because you, it's even more boring than counting sheep. Same thing here. You could count up, you could count up the peaks and divide by, you know, whatever. Or, you know, so you can do, you know, you can count different ways to do it, is all I'm saying. All right, uh, 15 seconds to vote. And you know the real reason that we're dismissing early is so that I can sneak over to Chick-fil-A and get some yogurt over there. Or maybe some nuggets. 
I'm, I'm kind of hungry. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Come on, you guys. Uh, let me see what the answer is here. Oh! I think I know what the answer is. Uh, yeah, that's right. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so there's a wavelength, that red arrow. All right, so that's, that's peak to peak. That's one wavelength, but how many of those have we got? Well, let's start at A. All right, so there it is, same line segment. I see you guys changing your answers. <laughs> but you see, you know, some of you are changing your answers, but I thought I stopped it. But, shh, 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 shh. but you know, this is not, the answer is not one. Because look, you got another one. So you got two. And then this over here, that's, ha that's half a wavelength. So your answer is there, ding, 2.5, all right? And not everybody got it, so, but the majority of you did, and including, I think, a few that switched at the last minute. All right, next question. Hit your refresh key, because this is a calculation. Calculate the frequency of... 410 nanometer light and type in the numeric part of your answer to the nearest terahertz. So remember that a terahertz is the same as 10 to the 12. So you may come up with something times 10 to the 14 and segregate, it, segregate it that 10 to the 12th out. Okay. So go ahead and do that. And I'll give you a few minutes for that. So Sonic, definitely, you know, if you're sitting with somebody, you know, you can definitely ask for counsel. Good. And definitely start bringing your calculator to class and definitely, and you know, not, not just your cell phone, just get your regular calculator because the exam, you're going to be SOL at exam three if you don't have a calculator and know how to do scientific notation. Do not let me catch you napping. I'm really hungry. Have a drink of water. Good, I see you guys in the back there talking things over. Good. It's going to be helpful. Talking it over, that's good. Remember I told you that in office hours? Remember? That's what you got to do. That's going to really help. Oh, my goodness. Hey, I want an answer in terahertz. Not in 10 to the 14 hertz. So I see some of you have rounded off and do it carefully. Okay. I see. Uh oh.
And hey, you guys, make sure you round off carefully. I see a, a big pile of students that are rounding off a little bit sloppy. But I see a good pile of people have got it. Right, you're right on the money. Ninety seconds. One minute. Thirty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, zero. All right, let's stop this. Stop this question. Um, raise your hand if you got 732. Sweet. All right, if you got set. Now, I want to show you the answers that were sent in. All right, you, you guys did pretty good. Now, now you guys here with 731, you got to round off carefully. And look, 7.32, 7 you gave me the answer in 10 of the 14 hertzes, not terahertz. And here's somebody that rounded off to 7. And... One point, I don't know how you get 1.79, uh, 1.52, So when you're doing this, that's pretty good. You guys did good. Um, if you don't have a regular calculator, better buy one from Walmart or something over the weekend. All right, deluxe homework 19 over the weekend. Also homework 18 is still running, due on Tuesday. You're dismissed 15 minutes early.